We're cutting through time and we're about to begin the first of our short story series now, focusing on diversity beyond gender. The first story is from Peter Kirk, titled Indigenous Storytelling. Peter is an Australian Indigenous, di indigenous director, screenwriter, producer. Peter started directing in 2000. His career in the film making industry has been very active. His versatile directing skills emanates his commercials, online campaigns, TV and film projects. He's also one of the founders and directors of the Hello Forever PTY Limited organisation. Peter won Most Outstanding Directorial Debut at the Houston International Film Festival. My God, that is quite something to say in one go. He was nominated as one of the top 25 creatives to watch in the Sydney Morning Herald. Please welcome back to the stage, Peter. Thank you. Do I have sound? Thank you, guys. Um, that was 2008, my God, when I was nominated. 2008, one of the creatives to watch. I've watched many, many people move ahead. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to take a seat because this is supposed to be about Indigenous storytelling and I, I'm told it's supposed to relate to the advertising and media community. And thank you so much for everyone for getting on their phones while I'm talking. Greatly appreciate it. Indigenous people come from a completely different background. Back in the day, 50, 60 years ago, when a baby was born, a young baby would be a, a, a beetle or, 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 a, or a wasp or a, or a bee would be held next to the baby's ear. And if the baby turned, they knew the baby could hear. So the first real notification and the first real introduction into the world is nature. And that's what we carry through our Indigenous storytelling. It's passed on through ages and it's passed on through the campfire and it's respect through elders and it's respect through talking. And I have a saying, the silence between the words. <clears throat> What's happened in the last 30 years, probably in the last 15 years, is everyone's come up with this word diversity and everyone's come up with this wonderful thing called, we're diverse, we care. Yeah, what they do is they go out and they get an indigenous fella or a girl and they bring them into a company and they say, there's a computer, there's an email, good luck, we're diverse. So today I'm going to talk about a little bit about what I experienced, what some of the indigenous people that I know experienced, it's the struggles I've had, the struggles I still have, and as a creative how I want my voice to get out and I want to be heard, and I don't know how to do it some days because I'm told to put a, something in the diary, put an agenda in the diary. I don't even know how to use a diary. Okay, let's all do a work in, work in progress meeting. Yay. Uh, wh what do I do? So that by the time I have that passion and by the time I have that creative idea and the by time I have that inspiration, it's gone. So, yep, that's me. A um, little bit about me. I set up the first Indigenous Award School scholarships this year, and I'm pleased to say that we've got three kids graduating from Award School in June and July. That's my gran, my dear old gran. She's dead now, but she's an Indigenous lady from down south, from Wollongong. She uh, uh, was adopted into a white family. She was, uh, we don't really know, but she was raped by a railway worker on the rails down in Wollongong and brought into the family and ended up living in a shack down in Wollongong and left a pretty, pretty confront confronting note when she died and that started me on, on my journey and explained a lot of things. So, do I have a clicker? Do I have a clicker? Or someone clicking for me? Oh, it's here. So, my thoughts on the ad game. We have become exceptionally insular. Let's hire the same people. We've become exceptionally reactionary. I'm sure everyone in this room has been, been on the floor when an ad's gone pear-shaped and everyone's jumped. And everyone's gone, we've got a brief, we've got to get on it. I'll send out an email. We've become exceptionally quiet. The hardest thing I face, and as an Indigenous creative, was walking to a so-called ad, ad agency full of creative people, yet everyone's on their headphone. When we were brought up to talk, when we were brought up to communicate, when we were brought up to listen to between the words, between the silences. We've become incredibly homogenised and we've become incredibly status-driven. I have no idea what half these word acronyms mean. I don't know what a GAT is. I, I don't actually care, but I know they tell me what to do. Um, I don't know what an a, a, I know what an AD is. Usually they're English and they wear a nice shirt. So 
know, and I can't understand half that Cockney language. We've become incredibly status-driven. I don't know why, because I, don't we all want to do the same work? Don't we all want to do good work? What does it matter whether you're an AD or a junior creative or a junior producer? Your thoughts are just as good as the next person. Let them be heard, regardless of whether they're Indigenous or not. My clicker work? Can I please get my clicker to work, please? For agencies land to survive, and all I've heard today, the recurring thing is how do we move forward? What's happening? Money's drying up, this, that, there's problems, blah, 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 blah. One thing needs to happen, in my opinion, and that is, where's my guy operating the thing? Cultures must clash, okay? I use those deliberate words. The cultures have to clash. There is no point opening up your doors to a different culture, particularly an indigenous culture, and saying, we welcome you, and then not having a yarn to them during the day, not pulling them aside and saying, tell us your story. Tell us what makes you mo you, you. So I'm not saying they must clash in an argumentative way. You must be prepared to have everything you, you do as creatives and ad people confronted. We will never achieve true diversity in connection with our Indigenous brothers and sis sisters by opening the door and saying, we welcome you. Rah! Let's do a cake. We must be prepared to challenge our thoughts, our beliefs, our way of working. We must be prepared to look within ourselves. We must be, to be prepared to reverse our assumptions. Unfortunately, we live in a, in a society where media portrays Indigenous people as broke, poor, drunk, stupid, uneducated. It's, it's not the case. Okay. There are some incredibly, and I work with Jake, I work with one of the guys who's taught me very quickly. He's a lot younger than me, Jake Thompson. He's taught me about working in both worlds, and it's incredibly difficult for someone like me. We must be prepared to reverse our assumption, our associated barriers. I'm not going to give you a whole sociological talk. We must be prepared to have everything we have valued question. Do we value our status more than the work? Do we value the client more than the work? Do we value working as a team and pulling people aside and saying, I want to know who you are better than winning a D&D &D pencil? I don't know. You, you guys answer. I know what I do. To break... OK, so a little bit of history about pure diversity. To break the submarine wolf packs, the British government recruited a diverse team of scientists, chess players, crossword addicts, mathematicians, and they had to break the Enigma code to defeat the Nazis in the, in the, in the um, U-boats. People from all walks of life, some people that are highly educated, people that weren't educated. And they did. And the tech players would teach the mathematicians, the mathematicians would teach the strategists, the crossword addicts, etc., etc. they all shared. They clashed, but then they all got on. And this is what crux of what I'm talking about today is you must be prepared to clash. You must be prepared to have everything who you are and what you have worked to become in the ad game and media game questioned. Because I'll tell you, I deal with it every single day. By its very nature, the advertising media industries are not diverse. These are, these are straight out of the Price Waterhouse Coopers media report from 2018. The average person that works in a Adland is 27, lives in Bondo and, and is white and rides a scooter. Really? The average person that works in Adland in Melbourne is 27, lives in St Kilda, is white, same thing. Creative geniuses. There is no way an Indigenous person, no way, no matter what school they've been in, no matter if they've come up through private school, will ever be able to come into this organisation and automatically bond. Okay? These two worlds must be forced to work together. And I'm, I know a few people in this audience, I know there's some very senior leaders in this audience, and the role of you senior leaders is to make them get on. Okay? There's so many Indigenous schools out there. There's so many uh, business units. There's so many Indigenous university units. There's so many Indigenous kids dying to go into the advertising industry and tell stories. Yet they don't drive, ride a scooter, or maybe they do, I don't know. Um, right. 
They don't live with mum and dad. I'm going to tell you a quick story. I'm not going to mention the agency name, even though I really want to. Um, I got a call from an agency about six months ago, and they said, would love to do an internship, take some Indigenous kids on an internship. I said, great, oh, good, great. How much are you paying? Well, nothing, it's an internship. Okay, and um, is there a job at the end? No. Nah. Have you done a reconciliation action plan? No. Nah. Okay, and um, uh, do, they, do you feed them? No. Nah. Needless to say, <coughs> the agency didn't actually, I didn't refer all the Indigenous kids. They must clash, or oh, it's just not going to work. Okay, for all the tea in China, it's not going to work. That said, I'm, it's not lost on me that it's a lot easier than done, okay? We hang out with people that are like us. We hang out with people that we feel comfortable with. We hang out with people that makes life a lot easier. And I'm sure we can all name all the pubs where all the ad agency people drink at on a Friday night. I've been there myself. Hiring people that we do not understand leads to trouble, leads to confrontation, leads to confusion sometimes leads to arguments. But these arguments are good. That's what I'm trying to say. Simply bringing people together from different values is not the same as hiring someone who has a completely different way of life. And a completely different way of life will often lead to a completely different idea. And a different idea will lead to a better product. A lot of Indigenous people come from backgrounds that are afflicted with suicide, alcoholism, depression, hopelessness... I'm not saying that they are, I'm saying that they've come or they know people that know these people. But hang on a second, isn't that what makes a good artist or a good storyteller? Okay. Reaching out and working with Indigenous storytellers, people, cannot be done in a safe, controlled way. And I know there's some HR people in the meeting and they're going to go, oh, but we need to set up some environments, and you do. But it cannot be baby steps. It has to be done in a way that has meaning and demonstrates that you truly want both, both cultures to clash into each other. I worked at a company five or six years ago, very famous ad agency. Very, 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 very famous ad, ad agency. While I was there, my grandfather died and I was quite upset by it. I got an email from the boss, sorry to hear about your grandfather. I walked in his room, said, Do you wanna, can we talk about it? And he said, sorry, I'm very busy. To me, as an Indigenous person, talking about it and talking about what that means and how that affects my family is the most important thing. And I know everyone's busy. It's not lost on me how busy you get and how we get stuck into our screens and how we look at briefs and how we get client feedback. But it's you, your job as leaders to allow that to happen. Okay? We have all heard the phrase, it's not just the right fit culturally, I'm sure. Hands up whoever's ever been told that. You just don't fit culturally, okay? It's the worst phrase in any industry ever. What it says is, sorry, we are not going to change the way that we work to, to accommodate for you who are a little bit different. We, this is our culture, this is your culture, we are not going to change, okay? It's take, absolving anyone from any responsibility. It's absolute bullshit. I think I've been told 15 times in my career <laughs> I'm not the right cultural fit. I don't know what the right cultural fit is. So you're going to leave here today full of inspiration. You're going to leave here today full of ideas. Hopefully you're going to leave here today thinking, I want to make a difference. You're going to go back to your desks and you're going to get a brief and you're going to jump on that brief because that's your job. Okay? And you might... So, you know what, I want to hire an Indigenous person. And you might reach out to someone and that person might put you in some, some touch with someone else and might put you in touch with someone else. But then you're going to get busy again. And you're going to go to the HR manager, we need to hire Indigenous people. And the HR manager is going to go, OK, well, I'll put a comment on LinkedIn. And I'll ask my friends if they can refer. And I'll offer a referral fee. But it just keeps perpetuating because it doesn't go outside the circle. I challenge all of you to connect with the Indigenous communities. I challenge all of you to actually reach out to 
the business units, the universities. They're a Google search away. They will love it. Or contact me and I'll help you through the process. Do not let your busyness not allow cultures to clash. The most important thing Indigenous creative people want to do is tell stories. If you don't allow the environment for them to tell the story, then you're not going to get a story. Okay? Don't forget this, what I said at the start about the listening to the bee. It's kind of, we're, we're oral. We're oral people. We like to hear. We like to talk. We like to see expression on people's faces. It's only when this happens that I think the ad agency will really start connecting with Indigenous storytellers. Thank you.